what's going on YouTubers? This is Clay with Clay's AC and Auto Repair and Clay Motion here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And you're watching the Clay Way. If this video is helpful, please consider subscribing, clicking the notification, sharing my video and giving me them sweet old thumbs up. If you've got a question for me, you can hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger. I'll certainly try to answer that for my subscribers if I'm able to. Remember, don't be the next to them, be the first to you. And if anyone else can do it, I promise you, you can do it too. So what we're working on today is a Ford Escape. This flavor and this information should cover from 2001 to about 2007, up until they stopped making this body style. But I do know the 2008 through 2012 is just a little bit different. The information should be still helpful for you folks. Okay, so what we've got going on inside this puppy is we got the key right here. And we stick the key in the ignition. And this is the only key to this car. Doesn't turn for nothing. Now we wanna first look at the key and see if it's worn out. Yeah, this key's probably worn out a little bit, um, but it should still turn it. She said she got in there and she just went to stick it in there and it just wouldn't do anything. And no matter, even if I take the key and I try to pull it back a little bit, sometimes you can get the tumblers to drop down you want to do that a little bit and try to work it back and forth and hopefully you don't have to go through what I'm about to go through. We're going to try to figure out what's wrong with So let's get going. Okay, lowering the steering wheel adjuster right there, tilt adjuster, we're going to find one screw right up underneath there. And then we're going to find one screw back here and one screw right there. And we're going to take out them three Phillips screws. Once the three screws are removed, we're gonna be very careful and we're gonna stick a flathead screwdriver in between these two points right here. We're gonna pop this up. Be careful not to break it. Just stick it in there and turn it a little bit and do that on both sides and then you'll be able to separate the covers. Just like that. A little bit more back here maybe. And I say be careful because we don't wanna break the plastic but once we get that up we might be able to take your finger and push that up like that now with both covers loose we can move the shifter a little bit to be able to remove the top cover first or you can turn it sideways and pull it out now for the bottom cover we're going to take a flathead screwdriver now looking at the cover we can see that the cover is affixed by three tabs that hold it onto the ignition I just took my screwdriver, placed it in this position right here, and popped it off. I can't promise you that you will not break the ignition cover, but you can't break what's already broken. This is broken, and we need to be able to service it. I didn't take this cover out during the removal, but it just quite simply pops out of there. If your vehicle has a brace like this, it'll be easier to remove it after you remove the plastic cover. It's not 100% necessary to take the brace out to get the steering column out. Now, with the cover loose, we can take it, pull it away from there. Dropping it down right here, we're able to pull it out. Now that we got the cover off, this portion of the ignition is the pass lock portion of the ignition. This recognizes that you have a chipped key insert it into your ignition this is a very important component but it is not the reason that our vehicle's ignition will not turn okay say for whatever reason you want to get this vehicle to start and you have the key and the ignition is not turning right up underneath here on the steering column is the electrical portion of the ignition when you stick your key in it goes and then your key turns the electrical portion of the ignition. We're gonna remove that electrical portion of the ignition. We're gonna stick our key inside our ignition so the pass lock works, and we're gonna see if we can get this vehicle to start before we replace the steering column. So maybe I can show you guys a way to get this to the service facility or a way that you can service it yourself. Okay, here on the bottom of the electrical portion of the ignition, there's a little clip and it's held inside this box and we can take a flathead screwdriver, can kind of push that out and then just pull it back a little bit. There's still another one located directly above it. So we need to release that one to push off the electrical portion of the ignition. And the top one is directly above it. 
right down inside there and you can barely see it. I'm gonna push down on it and push out on it. And then we should, when we get a little crack in the top of here, should be able to slide it right off. Now inserting our key in the ignition, taking and pulling this portion of the ignition out from underneath the cover, sticking our screwdriver in there, turning it, we can start the vehicle. Okay, so now we can start the vehicle. The only problem is the steering wheel is locked. So we need to unlock it. Now we need to remove the bolts that are securing the steering column to the frame. So we're gonna take a 10 millimeter and put it up on this one. And then looking behind the ignition, there's another 10 millimeter bolt right here. There is a total of three bolts holding the steering column on. This is the first two. Once them two bolts are released, the steering column will swivel down. Okay, so hopefully you're watching the video before you remove this thing. I'm gonna try to drill out the lock here that is locking down the steering because I can do everything. I can start the vehicle, I can shift the vehicle, but I cannot turn the steering wheel because the steering is locked. So I tried drilling into it. That did no good whatsoever. So we're gonna go to the next step. Even though I drilled right in the center of this thing, it still wouldn't release the lock. Okay, so here's the deal. I think you could take out the two 10 millimeter bolts, drop it down because it swivels, and then we'll take that die grinder right there and we're gonna grind slots into these screws right here. Worst case scenario, you may have to remove the steering column, but we can remove the lock. So we're gonna take the lock off of there and then we'll be able to replace it. Try to make these slots as straight as possible on the second bolt I didn't do so well but I did end up getting it out so I ended up having to run down to the hardware store and get two different bolts so I could replace them when I put my lock cylinder back on. The only reason I didn't try this inside the car was because this was for a customer's car. I didn't want to do this to her car. I wanted to replace the steering column but I wanted to make the video for y'all. I think we got this just about square enough. So now we're going to try to take the screwdriver and remove it. My screwdriver fits in there really, really good. Let's see what happens. I'm going to turn it off camera. <laughs> yeah. When I use two hands to turn it, man, that pupper turned right out of there. That's pretty dope. All right. Now I'm going to do the other one and see if we can make this thing become free. Now I've got that off of there. I'm assuming there's something else maybe affixing this. I don't know. We're gonna have to knock it right off of here and see what we can do. Would you look at that? Would you just look at that? That is so sick. Dude, now, because when you press on the brake, it releases the transmission shifter. And if you removed this off of here, You'd be able to start your car with no money whatsoever out of pocket. That is so dope. Man, <laughs> who else shows you how to do stuff like that? That is super sweet. You could actually take this out and probably gut this out and then you'd be able to turn your ignition. But don't forget that you would still need to have the key. So you're releasing the security system, but for $0 in your driveway, taking out your steering column, you can make it run again, even if it's broken and save yourself a couple of hundred bucks. Pretty dope stuff. Wow. Would you just look at that? It turns like it's supposed to. <laughs> can just reinstall this puppy and go to town. But for me, I'm gonna put another one in it just so it works properly for this lady, but I still think this is cool as all get out. Also, for you folks that think you could just break this, I don't think you're breaking that. It goes into this, and this is pretty darn thick steel. So you have no choice but to remove it. Okay, so I'm pretty certain 
that if you wanted to get a different steering column and you were going to use the key that was came with the steering column, you would have to take off this ring because these keys have resistors inside them and then that would double up the resistance. So you would take the ring off and you would tape or zip tie your old key right to your pass lock system right here. Okay, so we could have done this prior to installing the ignition, but now we want to switch this key out. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to remove the lock cylinder right here, and we're going to have the old key keyed to this lock cylinder, and it's best to have a locksmith do this, so you don't necessarily need to put the plastic on. You can run it over to a locksmith, have them change that out, if you want, usually they charge about 25 bucks to rekey this. Then you can use your original key and your original pass lock to operate the car without any additional programming. Just so you guys know, that's some good stuff right there. So this is how I secured my old key to my pass lock so I can constantly turn off my new key, pull it out, start up the vehicle. The problem is that you may need this key to unlock the door. So you're gonna need a duplicate or you're gonna need to take it to the locksmith to have him program the lock cylinder so it will work. At the locksmith, they can take the ignition out and recode the, the ignition to this original key so you can always remove the key and install it correctly and it functions properly. Just so you all know, this key will not work unless it is on the bottom side of this. I've tried it about every other way possible, um, mostly through this hoop and on the bottom side. So if you're gonna fix this to the hoop and leave it dangling down underneath the dash, it needs to be on the bottom side. For next to nothing, and thanks to me for taking the time to tear that steering column apart and figure that ish out, God bless you guys. Remember, don't be the next of them. Be the first of you. And if anyone else can do it, you can do it too.